chapter of Acts. Pastor Scott has me reading most of Acts and part of the man Matthew, so get comfortable. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, this is a beautiful story. Acts 3, 1 through 20. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. A man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg for those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked him straight at him and said, and as did John. And Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from him. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have. What I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. <coughs> Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles were strong. He jumped up to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While the beggar held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to, to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if our own power or godliness we have made in this man? The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know, made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him. As you can all see. Now brothers, I know that you have acted in ignorance as did your leaders. But this is how God glorified what he had foretold through all the prophets saying that his Christ would suffer. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins will be wiped out. The times of refreshing will come from the Lord. And that the, he may send his Christ, his Christ, who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. And then from Matthew 5, 13 through 17. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by man. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Do not think I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come to abolish I have not come to abolish them. We've been looking at uh, the book of Acts and how God, uh, from the very first, from the very first time uh, in the time of Jesus' resurrection, was trying to tell people, ordinary people, that he wanted them to fulfill his own mission, that, that they he, are the hands and feet of Christ, and that even though Jesus was not physically on earth after his resurrection, we are here among each other, and we are expected to fulfill Jesus' mission. So God wants you, and that's what we've been talking about the last few weeks. God uses ordinary people in their ordinary days, ordinary situations, to do some mighty, extraordinary things right where you are. Just a day like today, a day like tomorrow, you know, a 
workplace, uh, a store, uh, driving, uh, in line at a cafeteria, talking on the phone. God wants to use you to reach other people, for the benefit of other people. Now, when it comes to serving God, we tend to get mixed up in, in some ways. We get it in our heads that only certain people can be useful to God. God only uses certain folks, saints, martyrs, people who have great speaking abilities, people who are uh, have a, a wide circle of friends or public opinion leaders in their community. We imagine that God is unable or unwilling to use somebody like us. Maybe we feel like we're too young. We don't know enough yet, which is crazy because sometimes we know too much. We feel like we're limited in so many ways. How could God use me? And we think that God picks uh, the cream of the crop and he passes right over us. And, and with this self-limiting thinking, we, we go through life unaware that God is in every moment. Every moment he's asking you to join him in this adventure, be a part of the ministry. That every moment is an opportunity to make the world better and for transformation. Truth is, you were created by God and He wants to use you to reach others. Right where you are and who you are, God wants you to be the salt and the light in this world. Now, we all understand, and uh, Danny was talking about this, we all know what the, how important light is. And what, how light makes a difference. It, it, it's, it's when you stumble in the dark and you're looking for the flashlight or you're trying to get the cell phone to come on. And you know how light is important. <coughs> Wherever you find darkness, there's a thirst for light. But nevertheless, light attracts interest. Especially when that light provides some sort of direction or guidance. That light is, is instrumental. And we are to shine the light of God, the light of Christ, in this dark world, we are to stand out by being bright and by our clarity. We're to make a difference. We're to indicate by our lives where God can be found. God said at the very beginning of things, He said, let there be light. And then He saw that it was good. Light is good. Isaiah 60 says, See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises over you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. You know something? I believe that, historically speaking, America, our nation, has been greatly blessed to be a light to other nations, other peoples. To show the way. I believe we were created and prospered and protected by God for that very reason. Not just to roll in our riches, but to be the light for others in this world. You know, it's, uh, I, I think because we were founded on belief in God and the leadership of God and submitted to it, I believe God is trying, has been able and, and continues to try and use our, our nation and bless us. And you and I, in the same way, have been inspired by the light of other people who have gone before us, who we've known maybe years ago, people who have passed on, that have been a light for us and shown us the way that God is real. God forgives and God is powerful. We're to draw others close with this light. We're to show others the same thing. That God is good, and God is real, and God is powerful, and that God forgives. Jesus says to you and me, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men. They may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. In other words, they may see the light and know where it comes from. You're just reflecting. Ephesians 5 says, You were once darkness, but now you are the light of the Lord. Live as children of the light. Live as 
children of light. I can remember certain Christians in my past, as I went through many dark eras, dark days, who drew me to God by their light, by showing light to me in a dark little corner of my existence. And whether it was their honesty or simplicity or contentment that was real or their hospitality, I was able to recognize light in these certain people that God put in my path or that God put me in their path. And they attracted me more to Christ than any sermon ever did. Now the Bible makes it clear that people tend to resist light. Did you know that? We tend to choose shadows. There's something about that. And I think it's just outright flat, right, flat rebellion against authority. It's just wanting things the way they are or our own way. We tend to resist light and stay in shadows. And this was very true for me. A big part of me wanted to believe that those Christians who were showing light to me were in fact fakes and hypocrites. I, I, I did my share of mocking of what I thought were perfect little people. And there was a part of me that really wanted to believe that they were just as much in prison and in hell as I was. I didn't like the idea of other people escaping what I could not. I felt like they felt superior to me. They were judging me. They wanted something from me. I didn't like that. But as I spent time with these certain people, I came to realize that their light was in fact genuine, and their love was genuine, and their concern for me was not judgment, it was concern. That God was working in them and through them, and His power and love was undeniable. I started to have hope that things could change, because I witnessed people who had changed and were maintaining their changes. The book of Acts spells out how we are called to be light. The power of the Holy Spirit was poured out on these disciples who left their dark room and went out into the streets. And they displayed miraculous love. You know, in today's scripture, Peter and John were just going through their day. They were on their way to pray in the temple, the normal prayer time, 3 o'clock in the temple. And a crippled man was carried in and, like every single day, placed in their path. Every day, he shilled for money, and nothing changed. And Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give to you. And he said, in the name of Jesus, walk. What they had was hope. Faith. The now healed man launched into a walking praise session. And all the people were astonished and came running to Peter and John. The Bible says they came running. Light attracts. Love attracts. You were called to stand out in this dark world with your light and attract others to God. Let your light shine before men. Every day, in every possible way, in the smallest possible ways, show some light. But remember, it doesn't stop there. Shine your light, draw others close, but then what do you do? Then what do we do? You were also called to be salt. In fact, Jesus said that you and I are the salt of the earth. Now salt provides flavor, and mainly it's a preservative. You know, back when this expression was used, before ice and refrigeration, salt was used to preserve meat. And meat was packed in salt to keep it from getting rotten or corrupt. Salt saved the meat. It flavored the meat. Kept the meat palatable and useful. And we are to do the same for our community, for our family, for our friends. We are salt which preserves truth and saves. We are the salt of the earth. We're in a world that is dark and becoming more and more rotten day by day, hour by hour. There's plenty of proof of this. 
profession. We are to be the salt. We are to stop the corruption process and reverse it. Let God reverse it. You know, Brian talked about getting comfortable as, as I read this scripture to you. And believe me, as Peter said these words to the to mob of people in the temple, they were not comforted by his words. You know, salt is truth. And it's upholding whatever is right and real, whatever is good. And salt gets things right and keeps things right. How do we stay salty? By living out the truth that God has shown us. By preserving God's will and God's ways. Whenever falsehood shows up. By using our light to show the correct path, the narrow road, the way to the Father, we are salt. We are the preservation of the world. Now again in today's scripture, Peter and John drew others close by their words of love and their miraculous healing, by their light. But then, while others were close, they spoke the truth of God and they became salt. Peter said to the crowd, Men of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of your fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. And he gets personal. You handed him over to be killed. And you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy One. You killed the author of life. Comfortable now? He went on to offer hope, though, saying, Repent and turn to God. I know you acted in ignorance. Repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out and times of refreshing may come. He offered hope amid the truth. And I think when we sin, when we live the, a life of sin, when we're hiding in shadows, what's really missing is hope. Hope that anything could be different. We have surrendered to hopelessness. And we just try and make do, and make the best of it. You know, this was the second time in Acts that Peter spoke like this to the crowd. Basically, the second time he said, you stand before a holy God as a sinner in need of salvation. You stand, you, you stand before a holy God as a sinner in need of salvation. A little offensive, don't you think? And that's how the early church began. 3,000 people were cut to the quick, the Bible says. Their hearts were cut. And they came to the Lord that day and were baptized. You see, when I came to the Lord, there was both the light of love that attracted me to God that others gave me, but there was also the conviction of my need for God and my sin, which blocked me from God and only could be removed by the blood of Christ. The salt burned. It put a bad taste in my mouth. It took me years to work through it. There was a battle going on. And the salt kicked it off. I could no longer live in my sin and convince myself that I was okay. Because as I was drawn by the light, I was also corrected by the salt. And it burned. And I realized things could never be the same. But that's what I wanted. I wanted that. I wanted things not to be the same. And yet, my decisions, my staying in the shadows, was guaranteeing that things were going to stay the same. For the love of God, we've got to get people on track. We've got to get them off of their track to help. That's salt. It's not easy. It's uncomfortable. Sometimes it's met with bad consequences. Persecution. But God used the people in my life to shine the light and to sprinkle some salt. And I am so grateful to them. I'm so grateful that I did not just shut down my mind and 
go on automatic pilot, stay on automatic pilot. You know, at Pentecost, Peter said to the crowd, be saved from this corrupt generation. Be saved from the, this is not the way it's supposed to be. Be saved from this crap. It's basically what he said. Repent and be baptized. Now, this was not a one-time revival. This revival continues to this day. One person at a time, in churches, outside of churches, everyday lives, workplaces, bathrooms, uh, every place where somebody can witness to somebody else or, or display the light and the salt of God. So you are, to, you are to apply the medications so badly needed, this fatal wound of sin, which is killing us, killing many. You are to be the medicine of salt and light. And there's only so much time, you know? We've got so many days. They've got so many days. And who knows? Who knows what sin, how sin can cut their life short? It does anyway. It cuts our life short. But then, then we're free from this mortal, sinful existence. And so you have to decide that you are going to do this. You're going to be God's light. You're not just going to be put a painting a smile on your face or talking about how good things are. Because we all know we still need this salt and light. We still need correction from each other. We still get off the path. We go south. We start to corrupt. This is a, this is a lifelong process. You know, all these people that we're talking about, Peter, John, they didn't go on to get the presidential uh, merit award. Or they didn't get. They didn't make it to the Grammys. Or they didn't get. You know, they didn't get an Oscar for their speech. You know, they were persecuted. They were arrested. And many of them were killed, just like Jesus. And so I can't stand up here and tell you, be an all-star for Jesus. You're going to make it into the Hall of Fame. Living in this world, you're going to be you're going to be famous. Um, you're going to feel good. Uh, everything's going to go smooth. I can't tell you that. I wish I could, but it's not true. The, the truth is that the narrow road requires that you count the cost. Just stay at the wheel, keep going, that you live on the encouragement and hope which is yours in Jesus, in Jesus Christ, and that you provide that provide that to your brothers and sisters. Not easy. Hard stuff. Worth it? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's no other way. And that's all we're saying to people. You know, and I'm not even talking about certain sins. People these days get wrapped up in certain sins. I'm going to be salt. I'm going to focus on this sin. I'm not saying that, okay? I'm saying most of these sins is just one more way of saying there is no God. There's no one who tells me what to do. I'm going to run my life. I'll decide. Me and science. Me and school. Me and my buddies. We'll decide what's best. Salt and light is just standing up and saying, hey, there's a higher power and there's a higher judge over what's right and what needs to happen here. And you need to seek him. I'll help you any way I can. But you've got to come to terms with this guy called God. You've got to face it. You can't run away from it. The consequences of turning away from God is moral, spiritual, physical death. That's the consequences. There's no other way. That's all we're doing. We're standing up and saying there's no other way. This is it. It is the way. So let us make it our heart's ambition to stand for something. Show some light because certainly we have been blessed. And to keep the faith and pointing the way and preserving, preserving our brothers and sisters and ourselves, saving ourselves and them through the power of Christ, 
from this corrupt generation. Let's keep being salt and light every minute, every day. If you'd like to receive communion, I'm going to invite you now. This is open for anyone who wants to come. We've got the elements up here. Uh, you can just pray in your pew if you, if you prefer not to. Or if you need communion brought to you for any reason, just raise your hand. Someone will bring it to you. Let's be in prayer.